the Duke Blue Devils against the North Carolina Tar Heel. The ACC standings. North Carolina has wrapped up the top seed in next week's tournament in Atlanta. However, Duke can still share the regular season title with a victory here today. But the Blue Devils will be shorthanded. Carlos Boozer, their low post player, he is out with a broken bone in his right foot. He will miss at least the ACC tournament. So Mike Krzyzewski will turn to three different players today. Casey Sanders will start. Matt Christensen is a low post player. But don't look past Chris Duhon if Krzyzewski and the Blue Devils want to go small. Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. For Dickie B, I'm Brett Musburger. Dick, let's get right to Duke. Can they do it without Boozer? What does Mike have up his sleeve? Well, I'll tell you one thing, Brent. They're going to go a lot quicker. They're going to play right now Casey Sanders, and Chris Duhon's going to start over Nate James. They want James to come off the bench to give him that experience, but they want quickness. They want two ball handlers. They want Williams and Duhon to spread the defense, penetrate, and they want to create three-point opportunities to make up with a scoring threat inside of Carlos Boozer who will not be here. Now, what's at stake for North Carolina in this game? Well, I'll tell you what's at stake. Very simple. As you said earlier, they can win outright the ACC regular season championship. I know it means a great deal to Matt Doherty. First time since 1993. And I believe, partner, if they win today and beat Duke twice, win the ACC regular season championship, they're going to Greensboro and lock up a number one seed in the East, just like Stanford locked up a number one seed in the West last night. One thing sure, the stars are out. Joseph Forte will lead the Tar Heels in North Carolina. For the Duke Blue Devils, it is their outstanding senior forward, Shane Battier. But the most important player could be their point guard, Jason Williams. North Carolina and Duke coming up. Today it means that, uh, that we've done all of our preparation and now you tweak it a little bit. Uh, what does that team, what does that youngster need motivationally? Can you see in someone's eyes, in his mannerisms, in the team's mannerism, uh, what they might need? Do you need to tell a joke? Do you need to get on them? Do you, what do you, do you need to say nothing? Do you have to have Christian Leitner say something? And those things, that's what makes it incredibly intriguing if you choose the right things. Will you run down the list or will you instinctively know which, which I, one? I do most of my things by feel. And it uh, could be because uh, I'm not smart enough to have a checklist or whatever, but I, I feel, I, I think if you get to know your team and know your players well enough, you feel things just like you do in your own family, and that's what we try to create in, in our basketball program. Your instincts have been great on the basketball court. Your instincts off the court are good, too. You're here in New York now for the Children's Miracle Network. Could you explain a little about what you do there? Yeah, Dick, it's, it's really one of the, the most gratifying things I've ever done in my life. I'm chairman of our local CMN Champions Telethon, uh, which raises last year raised $1.3 million for the hospital at Duke. Uh, but CMN Champions around the country raises money for hospitals everywhere. And uh, the champions are not the coaches or players who are doing the telethon. They're the youngsters who are being treated because they're the real heroes. And every penny that is raised in your local area goes to that hospital. It's not one of these things where nothing against New York or Chicago where it goes to an agency and then they take their cut and then it's, it's sent back. 100%, it's, it's, it's the best. Well, you've had miracles on the court, and I hope there are miracles off the court, too. Thank you. We're going to say today, and it's a pleasure to have her giving us some stories over there for the two benches, Michelle Tafoya. And, Michelle, what's the mood of Duke as we start this? Well, Brett, if you were to suggest to Mike Krzyzewski that his team without Carlos Boozer is the underdog today, he'd say nonsense. In fact, earlier this week, he said, if we spend one second feeling sorry for ourselves or making excuses, then we're despicable human beings. His star pupil, Shane Battier, told us they will not make excuses and he added that this team has just one thing on its collective mind let's get it done uh, the world's gonna count us out all the, the Duke uh, haters and, and ambassadors are out in full effect saying that we're dead but uh, we're, we're full of vigor and, and ready to get it done Duke's Toyota starting lineup with Jason Williams, Chris Duhon draws a start, Mike Dunleavy, 
Casey Sanders and Shane Battier, the lone senior. Now Carolina will start four seniors, Max Owens, Michael Brooker, Jim Everett, and Brendan Haywood, along with sophomore point guard Ronald Curry. But we soon will see Joseph Forte, Jason Cable, Chris Lang, and Brendan Haywood before long. This is a tradition. Dean Smith started here in Chapel Hill on senior day. The seniors get to open the game, and only one time Coach Smith can recall when it backfired on Carl Hess, our lead official. Frank Scagliata and Andre Patillo and we're underway in Carolina with the game's first possession. The Juice is going to rotate into a trapping defense, Brent. They want to speed up the game. Inside the hand. That's why the lead finish in field goal for Sonny. And that's one of the keys. Bring the ball inside and dominate on the interior with Hayward. And now a block at the other end. So Hayward is lost by Chapel Hill. Slams home. A high percentage field goal. Makes a block. Comes out high. How much has he improved through the years? You basketball fans who have watched him, it is wonderful to see someone go 40 years the way he would have. Everett misses, tap rebound, it's Matty A. They're really going to try to go to the inside on a regular basis, getting the ball when they bring Lang in to go to Lang and Haywood down in the boxes. Matty A, and uh, wave it off. There was a pushing foul on the assault with the. Uh, Matt Doherty, his first year as head coach here at North Carolina, played on the Michael Jordan championship team, a winner over at Cameron in his first game as coach against Mike Krzyzewski and the Blue Devils. And Mike eyeing the action here on the floor. Hey, Doherty entertained us in that beautiful office. We were teasing him up there in that suite that he had. <laughs> what a beautiful office. And it did not take him long to get the breakers in. That aid misses the three ball. Curry hits Forte on the move and the runner. Not there. Tap back. No. Duke basketball. Duhon for the finest freshman in the country. Folks, you're going to love it. Jason Williams misfires and Hayward off with another rebound. They have to make those threes. They got to make those threes to have a shot here today. Up and down. Curry's wide open. He hit the shot. No, he can't. They gave it to him. Duke said, go ahead. If you can make it, we'll worry about you, but not otherwise. Duke trying to spread the court. Inside pass. Duhon gets it over to Battier. The open J. Yes. Great ball movement. One of the great assets of the Duke basketball team is they all can handle the basketball and they can shoot. They're using Battier as the point in the trap. A championship like environment in here today. You got that right, Barney. It really is the emotion, the intensity. Where he moves it to Forte. Got inside Williams up the fake and hit the shot. I'll tell you, we're seeing three of the best players in America. Battier, Forte, and Williams. I would go in that order. It's selecting my player of the year. Dudley works the baseline. Draws the double team off the dribble, and Jason Williams fires three short. Run down, down the middle. Curry with a bounce pass. It's a bad one, but scooping up is Capel on the follow. Here's Forte off another fake. Gets inside. For the shot off iron. Dudley. Out now quickly to do hard. Sanders get him going early, says Duke, and they do. Yeah, get some confidence out of the big kid. Came out of Tampa. You know, he was a McDonald's All-American, Brent, so this kid came in with a big time with yeah, You told me, Rick, that uh, he was an outstanding high school player. As Curry goes for a lack and a bad shot. Dunleavy, lead pass, Jason, sprints to the layup. And that's what they want to do, playing the quick lineup as we talked about on the top of the show. Duan and Williams open up the floor, utilize the 494 feet. Capel looks to Haywood. They post up on Sanders with his strength. Missed that shot, and Matty A yanks it away. Well, Sanders challenged him on that shot right there. Kick to the corner. Dunleavy's three. No. Pulled down by Lang. So Duke unable to hit the three ball early. They, they missed see. their first four, Dick. Hey, Brent, we may see a record of three point shots attempted today by Duke. Almost in every possession, they're thinking shoot the three. Oh, a slash. Kick Curry. Cross now, Capel wide open, in and out. Both teams a little tight shooting the ball. Oh. Battier will go for the three. They're now 0 for 5 outside. Lane with the rebound and up over the back is Sanders. That's been his problem, isn't it, Dick? Yeah, he had four fouls in four minutes against Maryland when Maryland played that great game to beat Duke at Duke. In fact, they beat him twice, two times in a row. 
I really believe here you got to create turnovers with their pressure if you do. You got to convert free throw opportunities. They were 13 for 27 in the first meeting. Carolina's got to dominate inside and they got to control and contain each three point arsenal. Reggie Love in for the first time. He's a wide receiver on the football team for the Blue Devils. Nate James is on for the first time. And James yanks away. And Julius Peppers missing that shot. He's a Carolina football player. It's Dumont. This is they still can't buy a three-point. And there's Peppers down with the rebound. Lead man is Caper. I mean, it's amazing. They're 0 for 6 shooting threes and they're up two. Good defense by Duke. Duhon pounds it down the right side. Dunleavy will put it down. The open J. A nice looking shot. I tell you, he gets better and better. He can make the medium range jump shot. And he's a better rebounder, Brent, than people think. I've been very impressed with Duke's defense here in the early goal. That has been the difference in this basketball. And they are trapping out of their defense, trying to utilize Duke. Open. Tell you something, Dick. When you look at Pepper's body, he reminded me of a little Mike Tyson. I mean, you take a look at this player who's got all this speed and quickness here. Look at that diagonal pass right here. There's the diagonal, there's the finish, and my partner calls him Mike Tyson. He likes his Tyson body. I mean, you take a look at this, folks. I tell you what, he may not be able to play defensive end in the NFL because he's not tall enough. But I'll tell you something, he can play linebacker with that body. I mean, that is some look at physique. And you ought to see him move, even in practice, Dick, he's so quick. Well, yeah, he's so agile and mobile, and he's also not fragile. And I'll tell you this, his character's a heck of a lot better, trust me, than Mike Tyson. There's no doubt about <laughs> I it. Didn't, I didn't speak I about the character. <laughs> there is John Bunning, the new football coach here in the Tario. Played for Dick Vermeil in Philadelphia. Was a member of the coaching staff that won the Super Bowl in St. Louis. So the Duke Blue Devils lead at 8 7. I'm out. NCAA basketball presented by Payne Weber on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Payne Weber. Thank you, Payne Weber. And the Toyota Tundra. Better from the ground up. Well, here's our Aflac trivia question, ladies and gentlemen. We'll give you one team, Georgia State, into the NCAA, the first team in yesterday. Lefty Grizzell, their coach, that's the fourth team that he's led to the NCAA tournament. What are the other three? Hey, Mr. Vitale, I, I know you know that one. I know the answer to that. Can I, what, do I win a prize? Do I win a prize? Oh, quack, wow. quack. So there's the shot selection, folks, and you can see that the Blue Devils are 0 for 6 from the three-point line, and uh, Vicky V has already told you that's going to be a huge key here today. Yeah, you got to make threes. they got to really start to get on fire there, and I think they will. Obviously, their game plan, Brad, is just what we thought. Spread the court, move the ball, and think shoot the three. Duke now has gone to Matt Christensen, so all three of those players that we highlighted at the top of the day have been in the game. And on the floor, Christensen and Peppers wrestling for the ball, and the possession arrow favors that side ball will stay right there in their possession so they do not lose the basketball what they're really trying to do with Christensen and Sanders they want to defend the rebound and just give them some minutes inside and give them some size on the floor they're not really going to score and be effective offensively like Boozer was when he was playing on the inside James trying to break out of that slump Coach K would love to get him on track here early Williams a splendid point guard as they pick the dribble up here is James. James is 3 for 15 in his last two games. Really struggling. Now Williams slashes to the left. Rebound knocked away, and Jason's got it. Yes, the three ball. And they're now one for seven. Great hands on Jason Williams, Dick. Yeah, he's very strong. He's the best point guard in America, followed by Jamal Tinsley, who does a great job at Iowa State. Over and boom, the point guard into Peppers. Great pass on the baseline, and Maple coming down. Draws the whistle, he travels there. Yeah, he walked with that basketball. You know, I was thinking about Curry and, and about Peppers. I have a question, and nobody's been able to answer it as we watch Peppers right here, trying to find the open man. There's the drop down, and a little shuffle, a little shuffle with his feet. When is the last time? A team has had two dominant football players play a significant role 
in their situation when they're a top five team in America. I can't think of one. Yeah, certainly significance the key word there. Yeah, and Ohio State one year was forced to bring in some football players to help out. Ricky Dudley and some of those players out with the And uh, here's Jason with him kicked to the corner now, and James will look for that open man. Dudley. Jason, great fake on Boone, the freshman keeps going. That pass, though, once he penetrated. Lead man now is Forte. He's wide open. Three ball is good from Forte. He said be smooth. He's the premier second guard in the nation. Uh, well, a reminder that on Saturday, the NHL on NBC is back. Top teams in regional action. The Red Wings against the Blues. The Devils versus the Flyers and the Avalanche against the Stars. That's a great lineup of games right there. Those are terrific rivals. The NHL on ABC, home of the Stanley Cup next Saturday. You know, Brent, I know you admire, respect, consistency, and the test of time. However, what's this for test of time? Carolina, 37 consecutive years, 1, 2, and 3 in the ACC. 31 years in a row winning 20 or more games and 26 consecutive NCAA births. It's just unbelievable when you look at the numbers. That has started here, and uh, Will Guthrie's, of course, with the final four twice in his three years. Now Matt Doherty, chance to wind up at a one seed. Curry slashes baseline, kickback, Capel, three ball, yes! Paper was big in the first matchup when they beat Duke. He had 20 points in that game. An underrated player, a kid that doesn't get a lot of publicity. Carolina leads it 13-12. A 13-27 mark. Jason on a runner. Capel down with the rebound. Hands off now, and here comes Curry, the football quarterback. Let me go inside of him. There he is. And great block by Sanders, who's been a factor defensively. Yeah, he's responding to the challenge. Dunleavy's three ball for the lead. No. Inside, Dunleavy goes and tracks it down. He'll hit Battier for the three. No. Into Curry's hands. Lead intercepted Battier. Defensive player of the year, two consecutive years. In the corner. James did not want that open shot. He's a little tentative right now. Williams will gun it. Yes. He's not tentative. Oh, no. He's not tentative. I'll tell you one thing. This kid can flat out score at 32 in the first meeting. He has eight already here, Dick, today. And uh, take a look at this block. Dick. Yeah, here's Sanders right now. This is what he does well. He's a good shot blocker, and that's all they need out of him. I've been telling you all year, you remember now, back about a month and a half ago, I said somehow they got to get him you 10 did. to 12 minutes again. You, you, you kept saying that, and uh, and Mike just thought he was a little tentative when he talked to us. Remember, he said he just wanted a little more effort out. He's showing it today. Forte comes baseline. Yeah. What a big-time scorer, Brand. I know you like this kid, and I can see why. He's such a big-time scorer. Oh, look at Jason Williams. He just did everything but go in. But did you see that move? I saw it. Oh. He's got such a super body, so strong, great hands. I want to know this, though. His mom and dad graduated Ohio State, and I keep asking, how could the Buckeyes let this kid go to do? <laughs> you know, Dick, what an environment this is here oh. today. You know, it's warm in this building. I see people sitting in the aisles. I see photographers around the court. It's been a long time since I've seen a regular season game that's quite like this. A zone right now. Normally you don't see Duke zone, and there's zone with Dunley be up at the point. You know, Doherty thought he'd see it today. And that's one way to attack it. His own rattles it in. And a senior who gives him instant offense off the bench. 17-15. Carolina. Dangerous pass. Doherty wanted it. They've got it. So let's take a break. 11:46. Shashevsky and Duke in a dogfight against their arch rivals. He stayed against Duke. And of course, North Carolina, they will play the winner of the Clemson Florida State matchup. That's the play in game Thursday night at the ACC tournament in Atlanta. They're in the background on the left hand side, folks. That's the big change that Doherty did with this building. Those are students over there, and there is so much a fervor in this building as a result of that change. Yeah, he really created an unbelievable emotional environment here. He has the Doherty disciples. They stand, he brought the students there. He'd like to bring them on the other side as well. You gotta credit Matt Doherty for creating a big time emotional environment here. Duke trails it by a field goal, 11.42 to go. 
the man defense. They got to get Battier some good opportunities. Cable right in his face. There he is. Creates one off the dribble. And just as you predicted, they needed to give him some opportunities. He made his own to tie the game. Big time player all year long. A class kid, Shane Battier. Right choice, national player of the year. Haywood coming through all that traffic, and the whistle is blown down there. There was a foul as Haywood was coming across the traffic, and Sanders picks up his second personal of this game. See, Sanders now trying to beat him to the spot, trying to hold the ball. You can't get away with that. That's a push. That's a quick two. And, of course, if you're Mike Krzyzewski, Dick, you got to think, well, I got ten fouls. I got five Sanders. I got five Christensen. I'm going to use it. I'm going to keep him out as much as I can. Good ball right there. Coach Musburger right on top of it. Inside pass, and Forte pulls the trigger, and it wouldn't stay down. Now here's Duhon. Not forcing the game. Hands off inside. James loses it. Goes to the floor. Carolina dives, and Christensen commits a foul. Frank Scagliata right on the call. Christensen making contact. I'll tell you one thing. The one player that Deuce got to get involved offensively to get him a little confidence is Nate James. Now watch right here. The ball goes to the deck. And as Christensen going to come over, and he's going to make contact right there. Grab him by the head. I mean, you've got to sit where we're sitting to feel this intensity. It's unbelievable, Brett. Well, that's like a heavyweight championship. Oh, wow. Match, Outside. Michael will hand it off now and Curry will attempt to reset. Lang left open for the J. Tap back, tap back again. Awood still trying to stay with it to Cable. In and out. And finally into James' hands. He did a great play right there, Brendan Haywood, to keep that ball alive. Duhon was thinking about it. What a pass. Kicks inside. James pulls the trigger for the lead. What a great passer. He has great vision, Chris Duhon. There's a pass to Lang on the move, and he draws the foul. He'll shoot free throws to attempt to tie. Now, folks, we go back to game one. Vicky, you were there. And you remember that Duke could not do the job at the free throw line, and free throws in a game like this could be so critical. Oh, no question. Mike Krzyzewski's club was 13 for 27 on their home floor in that game, losing by two at the end when Brendan Haywood converted on really a bad play by Shane Battier. Ah! So Lang makes this free throw, and you can see that Carolina hit 13 of 18, missing only five. Make this one, and we're deadlocked again. North Carolina is the best rebounding team in the conference, so they should definitely have the edge here. The four losses Duke has had, they've been out-rebounded on the glass. Hey, what about Maryland? we got to give them oh, a look. Yeah. Are they, are they on fire? I mean, they are on fire. You've been telling me <laughs> that all year. It's, uh, Lang misses the second one, Dick, so Duke nursing a one-point lead comes to the attack. comes down that right baseline again and Haywood was there Lang was there foul is going to be called and Matt Doherty wanted to jump ball he thought it was a clean block and there are the brackets the play-in game in Atlanta Florida State Clemson and they've got to turn right around and play Carolina then on Friday Virginia Georgia Tech Duke will play North Carolina State and Maryland goes against Wake Forest those quarterfinals are on Friday at the Georgia Dome folks they have sold 40,000 tickets to the ACC tournament. What a scene that's going to be, Mr. Vital. And I know they sold three to you. You and your two sons, Blake and Scott, are coming over. I mean, that's great. I'm going to visit with you down there. Wouldn't miss that scene, my friend. Matty A. A little bit better as it rolled in that time. There's a full court pressure. They're really coming after him. Up the floor now. Here comes Forte in the open floor. He's tough. Jason rides him, and Forte misses. Tap back. No. Matt Christensen battles out comes too high. He can pass the rock this kid. He has a great vision. Oh, Williams' quickness, and he saw Dunleavy off to the side and knocked down the three ball. Williams' vision is unbelievable. Hey, Brent, that's typical Duke basketball and why they excel right there. Spread the court, find the open man, and make the three. Back outside, now to Curry. Strong, good-looking athlete. Sat out last year with the injury. Kick it over now to Forte, who loves the open floor. And this time, he was looking for the pass to Haywood. Probably should have gone through with the shot. Yeah, should have shot that ball, especially in the three-second area where he's so effective. That last possession by Duke is the typical Duke basketball with this team. Pass the basketball, spread the court, and make the three. Krzyzewski using his bench. It's warm in here. 
He wants an up-tempo game. He leads it 24 to 18. He's got a zone right now, and usually Duke smiles when they see the zone. The 2-3, got to try getting the gaps. Very tough to zone Duke that the way they shoot. it by Forte, Dick, as he was trying to find what you were pointing out, that gap, so he's moving around. Battier very active, knocked away and out of bounds. And it'll go over, I believe, or are they going to change this call? Well, Scagliata says we're going the other way. Uh, you know what? I think that's a good change, Dick. Yes, sir. I thought he had a better look from this angle. He immediately dashed in to change it. All right, trying to attack the gap of the zone. Shane Battier went to the same high school as Chris Weber, Detroit Country Day. Looks like Battier knocked that out. Yeah, you know. Kick to the corner now, and Battier's three. No up over the top. Carolina ball. I'll tell you, Brett, Chris Duhon is going to become something special at Duke. I, I really believe next year he will be a super south. I'll let a kid, Jason Richardson, who has now become a sensational player from Michigan State, who won their fourth consecutive Big Ten title, though sharing this year with Illinois. Congratulations to Tom Izzo and the Spark. Duhon digging in defensively. Right? They're attacking Curry. They're leaving Lang on the shot as they got off Curry, and Lang made him pay. Yeah, they went to the trap and leaving him open. And they had a high low with Lang and Haywood. He shot the open jump shot. Man, this is basketball the way it ought to be played. It don't get any better at this point. To the guardian. Here comes Jason. Not this time. Capely yanks it away. I would pound it inside. I would pound it inside. Here comes Curry on the run. Ah, curled down the baseline, and it was beautiful. Curry is quick to the basket. He's really improved his driving game. Oh, this place is rocking, Brett. This place is electric. This is not a cheese crowd. Wine and cheese. Duhon on a miss in the Lang's hands. Carolina for the tie of the lead with a three ball. Uh oh for the lead. Oh. Yes, there it is. Carolina leads it. Get it to you, baby. Get it to you, Mike. That's a 7 0. Tar Heel one right now to lead it 25 24. Remember Sam Cassell said wine and cheese, no wine and cheese crowd here. Get the beer and the brats, baby. <laughs> Kick now Battier for the three. Yes! That was gets the big, lead back. That was a big time three because that one he shot down from Gorham, North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the energy there is. And leaving that spot wide open on the floor. You can see Mike's defensive game plan. Go ahead and let him have that up. high shot. Curry will attack. Not there, and not Christensen yanks it away. Here's Williams. Up-tempo game, attacking. Pulling it back out, out of Battier. Now they need Duhon to find his shot. Duhon to pull it back out now. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Duke up 27-25. Duhon's got a good basketball IQ for a diaper dandy. Battier up over the top. Yes, another wow. he moves it outside. Are you kidding me? How good is that kid? If he's not the national player of the year, I think we got a scoop out there. Somebody knows something I haven't seen all year. Loose. Haywood picks it up. They're not getting Haywood good touches down low. Jump hook Lang, though. He has responded with two field goals, and that one pulls Carolina back to within three. I am really shocked that Carolina's not going inside a little bit more to Haywood and Lang and really trying to punish Duke on the interior. Doherty is going to return Peppers at the next stoppage. And you remember that he added something to the Carolina game as soon as he came on the floor. Jack. Yeah, he's so mobile and so agile. Trying to control tempo here right now, Duke. Here's Duhon, the three. Nope, still can't find his shot. And Lang, who has been a major contributor here with his fourth rebound, he's hit a couple big field goals. Haywood. Haywood wants it low. He wants to go in on Christensen. He'll kick it back. Bad pass. Jason deflects. Rolls in. Jason Williams, just a sensational player. Anticipates well. Steps right in a passing lane. We take a break. North Carolina and Doherty. Trailing Duke 32-27. Timeout. Time show. John and Digger will tell you all about Wake Forest, North Carolina State, Kentucky, Florida, Georgetown, Notre Dame. And Dick, I know you believe the Gators 
could make a move on a number one in the South as Haywood sits. Oh, yeah, I think there's no doubt about it. They lost three games in the middle of the season when they played without three stars. I'm sure the committee will look at that. If they win the SEC, they're number one in the South. Here's a turnover. Jason in the middle of it. And Boone's got it back, deflected out of bounds. It should be Carolina basketball. Mr. Peppers helping out Mr. Patillo, the official. You know, it's an amazing number. Duke and Carolina, since 1988, there's only one year one of them weren't in the Final Four. That was in 96. Krzyzewski <laughs> pleading his case. I hope he's not talking in Polish to Scagliata. I hope he's not talking in Polish to him. He can't understand him. He must have made a pretty decent point. Yeah, he's pulling all three guys together. He wanted to make sure that there was a change of possession. The question is the ball came across the midcourt line. He wants to have a question. That's uh, that's what he's asking here. Who had possession of that basketball as it came back across? The ball is loose right now. Now, did he have it there? There's a kick right there. Kick? It's not a soccer match. That looked like a soccer <laughs> match, and I know you like that soccer. <laughs> totally confused there. I really totally confused in that scenario. They didn't change the alternate possession. No, but they uh, now the shot clock was left at 20, so it was no change of possession. Carolina basketball, but they only got 20 on the shot. So uh, Shushevsky got some seconds knocked off as Fulton looks in, hounded by James. Runs oh, passing too high, out of bounds. Great James D. I'll tell you one thing. The Duke defense has been outstanding, Brent. They're so aggressive on a defensive end. They are playing with such heart and some spirit, really closing off driving angles. How many times have we seen a team in any sport Respond. Lose a player and respond the next time out as Williams. Are you serious? Comes into the lane. Oh my! Are you serious? Now do you believe me? How good he is? Now that do you believe it. me? The trap and here's Lang left open up high. Is that trap with Batty? The trap at Boone this time. The freshman point guard making it tough. And now Peppers will attack. Foul. He'll shoot free throws. And I'm gonna tell you. Sanders said, who was that truck that <laughs> rolled into me? The half smile. He said, get that defensive end out of my face. Take a look at Julius right now. He spots an opening. He's going to attack. Tries to go for the big slam. Tyson, wow. baby. Tyson. Tyson, <laughs> Tyson with character. <laughs> I tell you, he's going to open up his football season against Oklahoma. What a way to open up. John Bunning, what is he thinking? And they got Texas as well. That's not Cupcake City. 4.50 to go here in the first half. With, you know uh, Duke leading, I think, and Casey Sanders with his third personal foul. Takes a seat. That's been one of his problems, and uh, he's played well when he's been out there, but uh, now saddled with three fouls with Carlos Boozer with the broken third metatarsal, right foot over on the sideline, and uh, Duke hopeful that he can come back for the NCAA tournament. He'll miss next week's ACC tournament, and this is what uh, Sanders did there. Yeah, you know, he blocked some shots on the inside, gave a little presence down inside, Brent. Was a little active. There he is, challenging Haywood, but he's got three. Not shocked by that at all. If you follow his background, he's had a history of getting into foul trouble. Knocked away from James by Forte, and it was touched last by Duke, so it'll be Carolina basketball. And right now, Duke is going small. Neither Christensen nor Sanders on the floor. Let's see if he sets his own up or elects to go man. He has loved chasing Haywood, giving away quite a few inches down low. Yeah, you got to pound it inside now to take advantage of that mismatch. It's an m and -er on the interior. They got no can't get it to him, Dick. Not only be on a switch, they knock it away from Corte. Now it'll be Curry. Drive, yes. Getting better and better, Brent. Even at the free throw line, he made five in a row the other day here against NC State. James to the paint. Outside Batty, a three ball. And it's Carolina into Owens' hands as bodies go flying. 34-30, Duke with a four-point lead. Brendan Haywood's got to get the ball. He's got to get the basketball. Forte to the paint. It rolls in, and it's a two. 
He's tough once he gets to that three-second area. They have no size inside to challenge Hayward. Carolina pulls back to within two points, 34-32, 3-42. The showdown in Chapel Hill between North Carolina and Duke. Speed. Year old Lefty Grizzell has led to the NCAA tournament. And there you are right there. David's in Maryland where he proclaimed them to be the UCLA of the East and James Madison. And now Georgia State is going to be a tough out for somebody in that first round. Do you know this? Hey, Michelle, we're coming to you. But did you know that Grizzell went to Duke University? I, I did indeed, Dickie B. And, and guys, the two minor injuries that concern Mike Krzyzewski this week were Matt Christensen's chronically sore knees, which limit his playing time, and Jason Williams' sore calf. Now, I'm told that both players were fine all week in practice. The only real risk is having Williams' calf get re-bruised by tough contact. That's what knocked him down in the Wake Forest game, Brent. All right, Michelle, thank you. Duke basketball loans the handle. North Carolina's got it, and they can tie or take the lead. I really think psychologically it's important for Mike Krzyzewski's team to get in the locker room with the lead. Well, there's 327 left here in the first half. We've got another timeout. It'll be Carolina ball when we come back. Okay, so George Lynch from North Carolina, played on that title team in 93, is here. And for Duke, Jay Billis now working at ESPN there on the left, and Mark Allery both played in that 86 team that lost to Denny Crum and Louisville in a championship game down in Dallas. Both sides represented in this war with Carolina down a deuce and with the basketball right now. Forte for the lead, yes! On a three ball! Came right off that screen, made that little curl move, squared up, knocked that baby down, the All-American. Now it is Duke's turn. Christensen back on the floor. Duhan looking to find his shot. Kick it back on a pass, James taps Battier. And the foul goes against Carolina. I was just thinking, you were showing George Lynch, plays for Larry Brown, North Carolina, flavor, but they better remember one thing. Their boss, the general manager, is a dookie, Billy King. <laughs> I mean, there it is. Hey, George, don't cheer too loud. <laughs> Billy King is watching you. He's watching. Where's Larry Brown? Larry should be in the house here. He's getting ready to see if... Well, he's probably out having lunch with Allen Iverson, don't you suspect? <laughs> what a great I, I know I would. What a great trade they made in getting Matumbo. Oh, it's going to be Matumbo, that inside-outside game. Carolina on an 8-0 run now, and Dunleavy will take the ball out of bounds. Carolina up 35-34 here. We're just inside of three minutes. See, there's no post present presence right now on the floor. Everything's on a perimeter. Open three for James. Quick knock it down. Carolina basketball. Curry keeps it on the dribble. Curry's in the middle, going to go to the glass, knocked away Battier, but right to Forte, and the three ball misses. Now Jason Williams will bring it back down for the Dukies. See how spread it to court, looking through. Dunleavy to regain it, no, and Cable knocks it down, and Duke just cannot find his range on the three ball here this afternoon. You know, Brent, they're going to have 23 point attempts here in the first half. Haywood gives it back outside. Battier stays with him, they double. Open hands, Corey. He misses. Tap back, Haywood. No tap in the other side. Peppers. Haywood, yes. It'll roll in. That's the size inside. They got no size. That's an Evan Emma. That's a mismatch. That's how they miss. Carlos Boozer. Oh, this crab is alive, Brent. Oh, is this crab alive? They built a three here with this flurry. 37 34, 151. Hardy Disciples going nuts on that baseline. Battier, right open. Ah, he was open if they got a quick Dunleavy for the three, not it. Battier tries to keep it in play. A great save oh. and a putback for Shane Battier. What an effort right there. What a tremendous effort. Playing with so much energy. Haywood wants to go on him. Double James and the foul is going to be called. They double Haywood on the catch. Now look at Haywood right here with the great size. The ball's alive. Here's the catch and there's the conversion. Watch Battier working on the offensive glass, keeping the ball alive. There he is with that extra tip, and then he knows how to convert. And let me tell you this, any NBA scout that tells me they're not sure if he can play in the NBA and would be a top 10 selection, they're out of their mind. They're wacky, bro. That kid flat out can play in the NBA, Mr. Battier. Haywood knocks down the throw. Yet they'll take potential kids out of high school 
with potential for the long run and not take the sure thing. You know what that, what that does? The coach that's there that gets the high school kid, he gets fired and the next guy steps in. You're so right about that. 38-36, Carolina over Duke, 123. Jason for the lead, yes! Oh, Jason Williams just rose up and said, all right, take this. And Forte comes back at the other end on a runner. He hits Capel, who'll drive for the glass. Yes! Back and forth we go, 40-39, Carolina. Capel, that underrated player. I can't remember doing a game where we got the three best players in America on the same floor. Jason again, it's one down. Four three oh. balls in this half. He's got 18 points, keeping Duke alive. We get paid for this? We get paid for this? <laughs> we'll take coming baseline, and uh, Jason was riding him. Ashashevsky has these kids really playing on the defensive end. They're undermanned on the interior, but they're really playing a superb especially on a defensive end. They're really challenging North Carolina. They give up so much size on the inside. Who's watching now? Forte will shoot for the tie. Out of the high school, played for Morgan Wooten, one of the real superstars in the scholarship oh! right. Missing on that free throw, and it's 42-40. Duke maintains the lead. They're going to spread the court. Jimmy Beheim told me this summer, he said, forget any other guard you want to talk about. I had Jason Williams in the summer, and he will be the best guard in America. Remember I told you what Jimmy said? Absolutely. We wouldn't disagree with him on what we've seen here. Jason looks over now to Coach K. Eight on the shot. Time to go to work. 12 seconds, and it'll be Duhon blocked Haywood out of bounds. Got a good decision right there by Duhon trying to challenge Haywood in the three-second area. As Brendan Haywood, great shot blocker, the best shot blocker in the history of the ACC. I think they're only going to be a couple of seconds now on the shot clock. Now they give him back one, make it three on the shot clock. 9.5 for the half. Owens checks back in for Carolina. They'll be in a hurry. Duke has three seconds. Here's Battier. The three ball. No. Not three. And foul is called. Or a timeout. timeout. Let me check that. That's a timeout. Doherty got it called at the 5.3 mark. You think of Matt Doherty, you think of 1982 as you look at Mike Krzyzewski when they won that national title and they beat Georgetown and they lined up with Jimmy Black, Doherty, Perkins, Worthy, and Mr. Jordan. Well, the card season revs up next Sunday down in Mexico and the two-time series champion Alex Zanardi returns to take on card's defending champion Gilles de Perrin and more of Auto Racing's best, the Cart Monterey Grand Prix live at 4 Eastern here on ABC Sports. Well, I'll tell you, that the, uh, the pace of this game is just incredible. And when you think these two teams could do this all over again, provided someone gets past Maryland in the ACC tournament. Exactly. Way. Maryland right now it could be like North Carolina of last year, where they've gotten hot at the right time. If you go to the Final Four, it wouldn't shock me. Also, watch out for Arizona and UCLA. But I really believe, people, if North Carolina whoa. wins whoa, this whoa, game. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me just stop that. Stanford. Stan oh, Stanford. 13 of 18 oh, no. from the Collins no, no, twins no. yesterday. Stanford's almost locked. Oh, Stanford, oh, when I was talking, we're talking about possible <laughs> surprises. I don't want you to look at that. The Cardinal, my friend. <laughs> hey, Carolina wins today. I really believe they're number one seed in the East. Here's up into the corner now. One floater, tap back. No, at the buzzer. So that'll do it. What a first half what we've had. Three. Duke takes a two-point lead into the locker room. Without Carlos Boozer. 42-40, Duke with the lead. Jason Williams puts on a show. Coming up, the Office Depot Halftime Show with John and Digger. How can you get more from Brendan Haywood? He's 2 of 6, and how do you slow down Jason Williams? Well, Jason Williams is tough. I think we got to build out. 
a little bit more when we're playing the zone and not let him get such good looks. And then when he uses that pick on the ball, shot a little bit more aggressively. We're trying to get the ball to Brendan, but they're doing a good job of slowing us up with that soft trap. Coach, thanks very much. Right, thanks. Early, it was Haywood. It was the kind of look that Doherty said he wanted down low. And it looked like it might be a picnic. But suddenly it turned into a war. Sanders went out after him. Then at the other end, Jason Williams with 18. Shane Battier with 14, Dickie V. And the Duke Blue Devils lead it. And they shot 7 for 22, as you see here, the statistics. 7 for 22 from the three-point line. We knew they'd go to that three-point shot. Got an outstanding performance out of their one-two punch. Battier and certainly Williams. As you look at Forte, 12 points, really effective. They got to control him in the second half, but I look for North Carolina to get more touches inside to Brendan Haywood. So Carolina in the home whites with Curry, the football quarterback, operating at the point. And it's stolen. Jason Williams now in a foot race with Forte. Speed on speed. Jason for the layup and a four-point lead. I tell you, you have to be strong to be able to convert there and transition the way he did. Forte comes right back at the other end and knocked away by Jason's left hand. First matchup, he had 32, Jason Williams, and Forte had 24 and 16 rebounds. He's one of the best rebounding guards in America. Dick, I think this is the best individual game I've seen a point guard play this year in college basketball. This is some show that Williams is putting on, both offensively and defensively. And he has to step up, knowing that his buddy is not on the inside loser, and he's responded to the challenge. Here's Lane, left hand, and he has been an offensive factor for the Heels. And that's where they have to go, Grant. It's no secret, but you got to be able to make those passes and get the good angles to the interior. Duhon searching for his shot here today. Battier will kick it back. Duhon off a pump fake, gives it back. Williams corner, Dunleavy baseline, and a run. What a great job of reversing the basketball. That's clinic basketball. Swing it from one side to the other. Reverse it, unselfish play. Lang comes out high to help. There's the pass inside. The second man on the pass. They changed the offensive look at halftime. Doherty and the coaching staff, and it's 46-44. And went to the interior just like we thought. You've got to bring the ball inside for those two big players. Daddy A to save it. Suddenly he dives. Capel's got it. Open man, Forte. He'll go now. Misses the layup into Sanders' hands. Duhon did a great job to break his concentration. Now Duhon still doesn't have the look. Dunleavy kick it back, Jason Williams, who's fouled by Curry. And Williams on a nice fake, and Curry slammed him. Watch them reverse the basketball. See, this is what we mean about ball reversal. Swing it side to side, make the extra pass, and you get the good baseline shot by Dunleavy. Is he smooth as silk? Michael Dunleavy getting better and better. His father, the coach of the Portland Trailblazers of the NBA. Duhon kick it back to him, and here he comes again. This is this time. Curry trying to rebound. Does yank it down for the heels. Back it out and bring it inside. Oh, Haywood wasn't looking. They've turned it over. Haywood wasn't looking, but that's not a place where a point guard wants to get a center of a basketball anyway. It's yeah. not out there. Haywood's not used to that. Not a good decision right there. Not a good decision at all. Now Williams comes back for the Blue Devils, and he'll fire the three ball outside. Force that one. Lang goes for the rebound. On The officials say it's going to go over. I mean, if you're a kid playing basketball, you got to love playing in that Duke style, giving you the license to shoot it whenever you want, and that's what they have right now. Nothing wrong with a Carolina style either. Oh, none at all. Two great programs, do things the right way. If you look here at the three-point shooting today. On a curl, and Jason Williams jumps Forte. He'll dump it in now low. Haywood, jump hook up over the top. No, missed everything, and uh, Duhon couldn't get the handle. Well, it's still Duhon is just a little off his game today. Dick, would you agree with that? Yeah, he was really playing well, but he had a great game against Virginia. Played well against Wake Forest. Right there, Haywood should have taken it right at Sanders. Sanders has three fouls. Instead, he drifted with the jump hook. And Forte misses on the jump shot. Dunleavy with a quick pass now. Give it up. Duhon, two on one. Jason. Oh, 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 oh. The touch pass from Jason Williams. What a clinic and how to run the two on one break. Keep the ball moving. Stay about 14 feet apart. Loose again. Jason's got it left handed. He'll glide in for two more. What a sensational performance. Is he a PT peer? He's the free Look at the Duke bench over here. And Doherty and the heels are stunned. It's 50 44. 
I mean, he is super scintillating sensational today. Take a look at Jason Williams. You're watching the best point guard in America. Now look at Duhan. He kicks it back to him, draws the defense, and back right to Duhan. Unselfish play. There's the deflection with the great size by Battier at the top of the press. And there is the steal. He knows Haywood's coming, cuts him off. I see NBA guards who can't run the floor like this youngster does. Let me remind everybody that tomorrow, one patient tormented with multiple personalities, one doctor risks his own life to save him. It's an all-new Gideon's Crossing. That's tomorrow at ABC at uh, 10, 9 Central, right here on the uh, network. A little program reminder. Well, you know, Brent, as we look at this matchup here today, if Duke somehow can get a win here, then the ACC tournament becomes big in that battle for that number one seed in I the wanna, East. I want to tell you one thing, my friend. You know, you conceded number one to Carolina. If let they me win. tell you something. The ACC tournament champion's been sent to the East in 13 of the last 15 yeah, no years. And this so that tournament down in Atlanta is still huge in this game. Yeah, it's still huge, but I will say if they win this, I really believe they've earned that right, winning twice and winning the ACC. Yeah, but what if they lose time. next week to Duke in the championship game? Well, they got two wins over. Inside, here's Haywood. Haywood got it, and he's fouled. And that's the fourth foul, I believe. Yes, it is on Sanders. They are starting to go inside a lot more with each possession. So Matt Christensen, Dick, is, uh, is up right now, and this war of attrition starts to add up. Sanders will sit with four personals. Christensen has two, I believe, as he checks in. And yeah, I'm bringing it right into the big guy down inside. Brendan Haywood has made himself a top 10 selection in the NBA draft. There he is. Good agility. You know, it's interesting talking about the power conferences. I believe this year the six power conferences will have about 30 of the at-large berths. The most ever has been 25. But it will be a heavyweight conferences that will get those bids. And we got a heavyweight matchup right now. 50-47, Duke leading Carolina. Duke basketball in Battier. Puts it and kicks to Jason Williams. Left baseline short. Loose basketball. Battier's got it. Back outside. Done leaving. Williams fake, kick it back down, Dunleavy, and great steal by Forte. He'll go for two. No! Oh, yeah. Come on. What, a what a play! That's one of the great defensive plays you'll ever see right there, baby. That was unbelievable. And Williams for the three. It's a five-point turnaround on Mr. Battier's defensive play. Oh, my! You know why I vote for a player of the year? No question, Dick. Plays like that. Dunleavy wraps it up inside. This is a Duke team named Desire. Kick corner, Duhon. Three ball, yes. Hard to spread that court. There's a lot of joy on that Duke sideline. It's 56-47 with 16-10 to go. Heels need a rally. They're jumping Curry out high, keeping the ball out there. They finally get Haywood low. Wide open Curry. They gave him the shot and he couldn't knock it down. But Lang with an offensive rebound and Curry will come again. This time, the three ball. He made Maryland pay earlier this year. They played off him and Curry responded, knocking down three big threes, even though that's not his strength. Duke 56, Carolina 50. It is a classic. <laughs> on the dribble. Batty A, but hold on. He was fouled on the assault. Where do they get the energy and the stamina to play at this pace? And you think of the minutes that those Duke starters are playing. Now here's Battier attacking the basket. Now we'll take a break at the 15:35 mark. A showdown in the ACC. What a defensive play by Battier. Time out. Great angle, and he's got his body under control. He gets the top of the basketball, and that's why two years in a row he has been the defensive player of the year nationally. Shane Battier has a chance to be the third, and only two guys have ever won it three times: Stacey Altman and Tim Duncan. You know how hard it is to block that without fouling oh, the man. Oh, not making body contact. That's amazing. Battier, he's got it on the dribble now, trying to create, and Peppers was riding him. Personal foul. You know, Brent, when you measure players and how good they play, we have a tendency to put so much emphasis on the offensive end. When you look at Shane Battier, people have a tendency to forget the great defensive effort that he puts out every night. Fires offensively and knocks the three ball down. And then he can score. He's one of the great three-point shooters in America. Remember what Dave Odom away for us said? He's the best on-floor leader he'd ever seen in college basketball. 59-50. Duke leads it by nine. 
once penetrates, jumps it off to Peppers, who comes inside, and Christensen picks up number three. They're really trying to pound the ball inside. Matt Darty's strategy. Matt Darty's brought so much spirit here. He did a great job to rejuvenate Notre Dame's program. Worked under Roy Williams. Played for Dean Smith. What a great place to learn under people like Dean and Roy Williams. Krzyzewski and his staff have to be a little bit concerned about this war of attrition because but Sanders and Christensen have been effective out here against the big men. And when you get down to that five-minute mark, you wonder if either of them will still be around. Exactly, and then you become really small, and you also wonder about the energy there is exerting because the bottom line is, I mean, Williams and Battier are on the floor for a lot of minutes. You know what I think about these youngsters? 18, 20 years. Resilient? I, yeah, I really believe that. I, I believe they could play all day. And oh, see, Mike Krzyzewski convinced you that. He convinced no, I, you that. I believe that with yeah. kids. I honestly do. Uh, I, he's amazing the physical condition these youngsters are in today. I mean, yesterday Stanford held up, for example, against that UCLA Heat out there and played a great game. Never looked tired to me. And a, a foul going against Carolina down here. Stanford is so balanced offensively and defensively. Casey Jacobson and stars on the outside, but that club is legit. And they'll be I double they one can, in the West. I think they can win it, Dick. I, oh, really there's do. No doubt I, uh, I think 13 of 18, the Collins twins shot yesterday. And one of them stepped outside. I can't remember which And knocked down the three ball. I yes. mean, that's they've got size. they got Jacobson. If McDonald plays the point well for Stanford, if he holds up under the heat of the NCAA tournament, I think they are really the team to beat right now. Here comes Jason Williams now, speaking of great point guards. Three is on the money. He's having a phenomenal day, but he's had a phenomenal year. Right out of the gate, he let America know that he was going to be the premier point guard in the nation. He builds a 10-point lead for the Dukies with 28 points for Jason Williams. And now they've sent Morrison in, trying still another guard, capable up high, yanks down his miss, throws it up and in. Jason Capel's got to get a little bit more involved offensively. He had a big game against Duke the first time, not getting enough shots here. Duhon keeps the dribble, kicks Battier, pump fake. And he traveled. Yeah, he walked. He definitely shuffled his feet. A little John Travolta special right there. For the Saturday Night Live, as you look at Mike Krzyzewski. Hey! National hey! champ. 91-92. Let me remind everybody that Capital One presents ESPN, the magazine's college basketball awards. Dick, I know you'll be part of this in Minneapolis on Wednesday, March 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Some of these fellas, I'm sure, will be picking up some hardware as Curry comes to the attack at the 14-10 mark. Morrison, freshman guard. Gets it inside, and Lang couldn't handle, and here's Duhon with a steal, and he'll go for two. Louisiana Lightning, baby, there he is. Remember the name, people, Chris Duhon. He is going to become a superstar at Duke next year. Trust me. Devils up 10. 13.50 to go. What a great environment. It's a treat to be able to sit here today. Wide open Owens, three balls on the money, and a huge contribution from Max Owens, the senior from Macon, Georgia. Well, that's what they get out of the senior. He's a big-time scorer off the bench. Brent Musburger with Dick Vitale and Michelle Tafoya. Nice to have you in Chapel Hill. It's the showdown. Duke without Carlos Boozer, leading Carolina 64 to 57. We have 13.20 to go. James backing down. Comes Paint on the drive. Battier in low. Yes! What an unbelievable second effort right there by Shane Battier. Nate James came up empty. They got to get Nate James going offensively. Duke is playing small right now and looking good. Small and quick. And they all can handle and they all can shoot. Here comes the ringleader. Battier will put it down. Kick corner now and it'll be Duhon on the assault back out but the foul was called the Duke bench I don't think I can remember a Duke bench other than NCAA championship games and that as much into a game as they are they want this one 
today so badly in here in Chapel Hill. Look at that dribble penetration. That's one of the strengths of Duke. They attack gaps and seams with dribble, dribble penetration better than any team in America. There they are attacking and attacking the basket and always looking to kick the ball out. I told you before the telecast after I came out of the locker room, Mike Krzyzewski was so intense. It was unreal. Did I tell you before? You did. Game? You did, Dick. And it uh, doesn't take much to get uh, Coach K intense. He said to me, he said, underdog? Yeah, 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 yeah. Our name is Duke. Well, We're Duke. I, Michelle I, I have to about tell you that I know he played this well, but I hate to break the news to him, but he was the favorite today in this game. I, I know you. Know, I was shocked when I saw that because of the loss of Boozer. I know you told me that. Back to Jason Williams. <laughs> Missing on the three ball. Haywood off with the rebound. There's Battier up on top of the defense, and he's going to try to trap. Curry will fire the three. Not this time off Owens. And into James' hand. And the senior providing leadership out on the floor. Here's Duhon. He'll kick corner. It'll be Battier's three. Yes! Nothing like the three-point shot. It has revolutionized college basketball. It has changed the entire picture of the college game, Brent. It certainly changed the picture of this game. It's 70-57 now, Duke. They went in low, missing, and Duke is dominating. Doherty wants a foul, and he's not getting it. Williams on oh. pass, and a cut from Dunleavy. Oh, baby. Get a T.O., Matt. Get a T.O. Doherty's still screaming. In danger of getting a technical. What a pass. Did you see that pass and the movement without the basketball? Look at the emotion of Matt Dard. He'll fight it. Watch this pass. The no look pass. I mean, he makes like Jason Kidd. There's the great pass, the great cut by Dunleavy without the ball. Yeah, you know, you know, Dick, Jason Kidd's a great comparison because, you know, he's not nearly as big as Magic was. He's got that same kind of pass that Jason, Jason passed like that in the open floor. But you know what? Jason Williams is a much better shooter. I was just going to tell you that. You beat me to the punch, scout. You're a scout, man. <laughs> I tell you, you beat me to the punch. I was going to tell you, he's a better shooter than Jason Kidd. Look at him right here, defensively with the steal. What a superstar performance. There he is anticipating well. He's showing he's got range as a shooter. You know, you know what, Dick? I hate to say this to my friends at Northwestern, but if I had to do all over again, I'd come to the ACC just to watch basketball games. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is super soft Jason Williams with 28 today, already six assists. He's hit six of 11 from three-point land and a pair of steals. What a day. This team is really prepared mentally, physically, and emotionally here. They and to Jason's hands again. Hey, we have a post-game report coming up after this one. Knocked out of bounds by Peppers. 11.05 to go here in uh, regulation. It's a, his quickness that blows my mind. When you see Jason Williams take the ball in the lane, I didn't realize he was as quick as I'm watching here today. It's unreal. Don Lady, another smart player that uh, knows what to do with the ball. So Duke is just loaded with youngsters who understand the game. Really Duhon's going to join that group, too, here in a couple of years. James comes down. He's a senior. Kind of baseline. Misfiring. Off of the Capel's hands. Carolina looking to put together a rally now. Forte will try to get to the open floor. Couldn't find it. Capel from behind. James may have influenced that shot. Morrison drives. Lay it in for the freshman. He's going to be a good player here. Boone and Morrison are going to contribute to this program. There's no doubt about it. And they got some good recruits they have signed. They're touching the floor. That's all of what they do down at Cameron Indoor Stadium. I dig it back in, Dick. Yeah, they're trying to dig back down defensively. Jason knocks down the three and quiets it right there. That is 31 points. For Jason Williams. And Duke has taken 32 threes, Brent. 38 is the school record. I told you on the top of the show, they might break the school record today. This time, Forte gets it to fall, and he's fouled. Because of Forte, he can put a lot of points up quickly. He's had spurts this year where he scored 12 points, 14 points in about five minutes. Here is Sanders checking back in. That's and remember, he's been uh, saddled now with four personal fouls. Yeah, Forte got hit on the arm right there. No question, there was contact on his arm, Brent. You're right about him with four fouls now. It'll be tough for him to defend on the inside. They just tried to steal a few minutes out of him. Still 10 minutes to go. And Forte, with the old-fashioned three-point play, pulls Carolina 
back to within 12. 75-63. If North Carolina's going to come back and win, they got to really defend. It's going to be on the defensive end. They're really going to lock up. Dunleavy left alone. The three over the top, and it goes to Carolina. That's 33 threes. I personally think the three-point shot should a three-point shot should be moved back a little bit to the international rule, 20 feet, 6 inches, and reduce the clock to 30 seconds because it's become too dominant of a shot, Brent. Ope jumps out. Williams sticks right with him. Stays square defensively and forces a bad shot out of Forte. He wants a foul. Wants a foul. Watch a technical. Watch a tee. Watch a tee. You don't want to get a tee. On the floor, there's nothing that the official could do. He has to call the tee because Doherty came out on the floor. You take a look at it and watch Doherty over on the side. See him right there? Folks, that's automatic. There's nothing an official can do. I mean, the ball's going back down the other side. You've got to call the technical in that situation. And uh, if Matt, Matt trying to bring the crowd into it now, firing the crowd out. Not a good technical, Brent. Not a good technical at all. You're down 12. Here it is. I'm sure he'd like to have that moment back. Daddy A missed the second. Here's the play in question. Let's see, first of all, if there was a foul. Could have been called, I guess. But the hands were down close to the ball. Now it's 76-63, 927. Duke bringing some seconds down. Daddy A kick corner ball. And here comes Duhon. Air ball. Sanders got the rebound off the miss. Back outside. Duhon will not put it right back up. He had the wide open three as well. Dick, there's only eight left on the shot clock because that was an air ball. Six on the shot for Jason Williams. He sees it. He goes left-handed. No. Carolina ball. Carolina got away with one right there. It looked like it was contact on Williams. Carolina needs points now. Owens will attack. Yes, and one. Huge play from Max Owens. I'll tell you, Owens is the kid that can provide that offensive firepower. I love the emotion and the spirit of Matt Party on that sideline. The energy, the enthusiasm he pours out. There's a good head fake. There he is splitting the defense, Brent. And now he lays it up on the glass. Take a look at Darty's reaction. That's why the Darty disciples on that baseline love him. Dick, I don't know whether he's watching right now as Sanders has fouled out of the game. You see the disciples. I don't know if Dewan Widener over in Camden, New Jersey is watching this, but I read the New York Times today, and his mother and Dewan both insist they're going to school in Memphis, and young man, you'll never regret that. With an environment of college basketball, you will love the days. Trust me, the money will still be there. The NBA is not going broke. Go to school and enjoy these moments, man. You can't beat it. Amen to that. I've been saying that for five years. You don't want to give up these kind of memories. Kick back, Dunleavy. He's got Duhon on the attack. Foul, and he'll shoot. Chris Duhon spotted that opening. You know, getting back to your statement, Grant, I ran into Grant Hill at an airport several years ago and the first thing he said to me when he grabbed me he says dickie v please tell those kids to stay in school those were the greatest years of my life absolutely and there's duhan attacking the basket because you're right the cash will be there didn't hurt tim duncan didn't hurt david robinson didn't hurt grand hill exactly. i'm in awe here today i'm That's absolutely in awe just an incredible spirit. scene in here in chapel hill Duke and North Carolina, I've gone on record saying it, and I really believe it, though a lot of people disagree. I think it is the greatest sports rivalry of all. I don't think there's another rivalry in sports that can challenge it. Well, you know, I thought Michael Wilbon of the uh, Washington Post had a good point. And one of the reasons why we like this rivalry is that both teams have played well over the last 20 years. It That's isn't true. like it's not a one-sided rivalry like the St. Louis Cardinals and the Chicago Cubs. I mean, these two teams, they trade blows, man. This is like a heavyweight championship in here. Every year, something at stake, a number one seed or a national ranking or an ACC championship. And so much emotion. Great pass for Morrison, but he got away from Peppers. Back down, this Morrison's very active. Great pass to Forte. Just the shot, got it down. Out. And now he's fouled this time by Jason Williams. And he will shoot, trying to close back to an attempt. Dick, I'm going to tell you, Morrison is a very active freshman. He's out of Redmond, Washington. Yeah, he's got great bounce in his step. And there it is. 
as he gets it over to Forte. You ready for this? I've had some odd requests at my time. Yes. But Mr. Morrison came to me last year, and he said, look, I want to date this girl and take her to the prom. <laughs> Could you propose for me on the air at the high school All-American game I'll play? And I did, and he went to the prom with her. He did? He should at least have me as the chauffeur. <laughs> Is he still dating that girl? Or? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I asked him, in fact, earlier this year. I don't think so. <laughs> Forte, an excellent free throw shooter, one of America's premier players. Here comes Mr. Morrison, out of the Washington area. You think about Forte, Williams, Battier, you throw in the names Casey Jacobson and Jason Richardson, and that's my All-American team. So it's a 10. It's 8-14. It's Jason Williams of Duke holding the basketball. And also Troy Murphy was in my super set. Fire the three over the top. is short. And Carolina with a chance to cut into it. Knocked away by Duke. Oh, 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 what hustle, baby. What he was hustle. calling timeout. He was calling timeout as he came over the top. It was... What, got, hustle what agility. Huh? Hey, they got insurance. I'm going to call up Dick Vador. I'm getting the AD. They got insurance. I almost got hurt here. I almost got hurt. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Quit crying. Oh, wow. <laughs> Big John. Big John, my stats guy. He's the one who had to bail out. He was in harm's way. John Good move, him. Big John. <laughs> I tell you, Big John does a great job. He's he got that right. Four day. Oh. This is on the runner. Out of bounds, and it goes over. Wow. What hustle. Everything you'd want in a college basketball game and more. NCAA basketball on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. He was out of bounds as he, uh, you see, he was on the sideline and he was out of bounds. And Matt Doherty let him know about it, too. I tell you, Matt's got the striped shirt on, still on the sideline. Make by Forte, no foul on the inside. Doherty can't believe it. Williams comes back down. Kick now, Duhon. Yes, 13 here in the second half. Scoreless in the first half, but Duhon blazing right now. On the attack, Morrison this time is fouled. I'll tell you, that was created off the penetration of Mr. Williams. What a super job. He and his buddy love playing together. What music they are making together. Duhon and Williams. Watch Williams with the penetration. I mean, he penetrates so well, he knows where his teammate is. He spots up, shapes up at the trifecta line, and it's trade time. I'll tell you one thing, too. You ready for this? The RPI rates the ACC the fourth best conference. Well, I don't need the RPI, Brent. I got my BBDI, my Vital Ball Dome Index, and I'm a dummy. But if they're the fourth best conference, I want to see the other three. I mean, this is my Ball Dome Index. <laughs> I mean, I don't need the RPI. <laughs> Fourth best conference, are you serious? <laughs> what kind of information are they giving up, Mr. Musburger? <laughs> uh. We should sponsor some of your rants. <laughs> <laughs> for in and uh, Williams one hands it into the corner. Nice. And steps out. He's oh. thinking about managing time a little bit. Dunleavy misses the three ball, but Battier reaches for the offensive rebound. It's interesting, Carolina's big men are off the floor. Duke has dictated how this game is going to be played. Yeah. That is unbelievable to me. And here comes Forte on the drive, yes. Goes to Forte, moving without the basketball. They have decided that they're going to go with a quicker lineup. And I think that Mark Krzyzewski's going to be very happy about Absolutely. that decision. Not have those big trees in there on him. Kick over Dunleavy. That would have been a lot tougher to get against Haywood, I'll tell you that, ladies and gentlemen. What a pass. I'll tell you, their passing ability and their movement without the basketball is just outstanding. There's Forte getting inside and draws the foul, coming to the free throw line, stopping the clock right now at the 550 mark. Carolina down 14 and chasing. You know, if North Carolina were to lose this game and it stays as it is, they tie for the ACC regular season championship. And if the two teams split the regular season games, and if there is a tie, then you go down and it's really broken up in terms of determining who gets to see the number one seed by comparing each team's record against the team occupying the highest position in the standings. And that came down to Maryland, and they beat Maryland twice. They split Duke, and therefore North Carolina gets the number one seed. So uh, if Duke wins this game, Dr. Brackets, <laughs> who, who, do, who do we see number one in the East? 
Well, I'll tell you one thing. Now we got to wait. Now we got to wait. We got to wait for the ACC tournament. There's your standings right now to show you Duke trying to get a share of the title. Won it four years in a row, trying to get it for the fifth. And they've got that look in their eye. Just like you got to wait for number one in the Midwest between Michigan State and Illinois. Jason Short on that shot. It'll be Carolina's ball. Carolina's still trying to put together that rally. It's five and a half minutes. They need a hot shooter on the outside. They need Forte. James is on Forte now. Not giving him the look. Capo blocked Battier into James. Hand off Duhon. Jason's open on the other side. Yeah. Duhon for the layup. Slides inside. Has he becoming a sensational diaper dandy? This kid just is getting better and better at the right time of the year. Played great against Virginia and Wake Forest. Jason almost stole it. Forte comes on the attack at the free throw line. Rattles out. They have decided to go with the smaller lineup. They are allowing Duke to dictate the personnel that's being played on the floor. Unbelievable as you watch this game unfold. There's Battier with the block shot. That's why he's been player of the year defensively two years. He's over Langdon Haven on that sideline. Sanders contributed. Christensen contributed. Both are on the Duke bench right now. Haywood is out of the game. Lang is out of the game. Both teams going small. Duke up 87-73 and 442. Well, this lineup matchup, I gotta give the edge to Duke. Block Peppers has got it. Now Curry will bring it down. Curry's got to get into that set and get some shots. They double the ball. Cable come back outside with Curry. They'll let him fire that three ball. Not this time. Tap, no. Peppers, and he's fouled. I should say Cable. Let me check that. Cable going up with the rebound was fouled. They're going to allow Curry to take that shot from the perimeter. Dick with, with Jason Williams, Shane Battier, and Duhon blazing right now on the floor. You'd be hard-pressed to think that Carolina can mount some kind of a drive to climb back in this unless they can find that three-point ball that you've been talking well, about. Well, exactly, and they're not really a great three-point shooting team. And that's why teams that can't shoot that three have the ability to get back in the game. As you look at Matt Darnie on the side, he's done a phenomenal job. A lot of people mention his name as potential national coach of the year, even though I'm voting. I'm giving it to Al Skinner of Boston College. What he has done in that program, I mean, they were like, they weren't even in the top 50. They weren't even in the top 50 projected during the season. Yeah, BC's really done a job. Oh, man, unbelievable. Of course, Phil Martelli down at St. Joseph's. Also, you got to think of Rod Barnes down in Mississippi. And Billy Donovan. With those injuries, what he has done at Florida has been amazing. 87 74. Duke with the lead, 4 18. Now, Duke didn't make free throws in that first matchup. They're going to get the, to the line a great deal now in the last four minutes. It's in their hands to win this game. They trap. Carolina knows that Duke's been working away on the clock the last couple of trips. Jason will take a few seconds off. Finds daylight. Goes for the easy two. And if Brendan Haywood's there, he's not going to the goal that easily. I totally agree with that, my friend. 350. Forte. Off the dribble, misfiring, and it's Duke. It's James. This is Duke basketball right now. The Duke's got this game. They've got it by the throat, ladies and gentlemen. They came in here and put on a clinic led by Jason Williams and Shane Battier. They came on a clinic and put one on with their effort defensively, and then the tone was set early by Williams and Battier. They set the tone early in this basketball game. Another chapter being added to the rivalry. Here's Dunleavy. Off with the three into Pepper's hands, Forte. Forte on the assault, got a kick back outside, Cable three ball, misfiring into Dunleavy's hands. They don't have the three-point shooters that can get you back that quickly. In fact, in the game I had the other night, they didn't take a three up until halftime, and they were winning over North Carolina State. And here they've been held for five and a half minutes. I mean, Duke has really shut him down over the last five minutes to seize control of this game. Inside, Battier for the two-handed slam. And here is that great two-man game. Looking for the open man, just doing a great job dissecting the defense. Look, Chris Collins, Wojciechowski. Great coaching job by Krzyzewski and his staff, Wojciechowski and Collins, Dawkins. This, this team was so well prepared, and it was the mindset that Krzyzewski had. You don't cry about the loss of Boozer. You just step it up, and that's what they had. They all have stepped up. There's no question. Every player has moved up his game. 
Play with a lot of emotion, which you expect in this game. As Boozer are on the sidelines, making like a cheerleader. They're hoping to get him back in two and a half weeks. Well, Dick, I'll tell you, in my opinion, if Duke and Carolina play for the ACC championship in the tournament a week from today in Atlanta, the winner of that game, I think, will go to the East as the number one seed oh, no because, again, it. the tourney champion has been sent to the East in 13 of the last 15 years. Oh, I said if they win here, but if they don't win here, obviously it's going to happen. Who wins that game? If we look at Williams and Battier, if they play again in the tournament, the same with Michigan State and Illinois. Mr. Vidal, here is our monster play of the game. This is a monster defensive play taken away, Dickie V. Oh, we take a look. I know the play you're thinking about. There it is, Mr. Battier with the great angle. And he blocks the shot of the prolific scorer. The play of the game, the monster play of the game. Shane Battier, a superstar. Well, Mike Trangisi, the outstanding commissioner of the Big East, he and the committee now will uh, will move into Indianapolis, I guess, about Wednesday afternoon, and they'll move into that big conference room and start putting the names up there in the brackets and uh, moving them around and select the 65 teams. Remember, it's 65 this year, and two teams will play to see who advances. And Duke with some pressure, just token, once it takes them time off the clock, make them work. It's all about the clock right now for Duke. Open four hoop for James. Just a little frosty, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, baby. The it's Dukies over. have done it again. It's going to be a joyous ride back to Cameron Indoor Stadium. About nine miles away. Here's Haywood, who's back on the floor. He gets his own miss and uh, puts it back in at the uh, 208 mark. A lot of the Tar Heel faithful, though, not giving up. And he's got to spread the court now against the trap and take some time off the clock. Two great programs. Yes, I indeed. Can't, yes, I, indeed, Dick. I can't say enough about North Carolina and Duke. They do things the right way, graduate players. They don't cheat. Classy kids, classy coaches. Everything about both programs is so, so special. What is there not to praise? People say, well, you praise those guys too much from North Carolina and Duke. What is there not to praise? Daddy A with a Another defensive save, making another statement to be player of the year in college basketball. A senior who stayed all four years, played for Coach Krzyzewski and the Blue Devils as they bring down the clock now toward the 110 second. And you're looking at the All-American point guard, Jason Williams, as Forte jumps out on him. Williams had nine assists to go with his 33 points here today. And he just played a brilliant game. They all did. They really, every player for Duke came out and contributed in this W here today. Great effort. You talk about great point guards. That's the best I've ever seen on a college level. Mr. Phil Four, number 12. When he used to go to that four corners, he used to raise the hanky and say, it's over, yeah. baby. Well, Dick, as we bring it down, I know that we want to wish good luck to Jim Nance, Billy Packer, and the gang over at CBS. They'll have the tournament. Of course, you move on up to ESPN and Bristol this week, championship week. We look forward to, uh, to all of those shows. I think it's just going to be a great, great March tournament for, uh, for everybody. And uh, we're seeing two teams that will certainly be in the uh, field of 65. They'll be named regardless of what happens here today. As you really think so? Uh, well, you think there's a chance? Uh, what was the first there's clue? A chance, there's a chance they may get in. Oh, we got a scoop. Musburger in the old Carolina days. and Duke are going to be in. In the old days, only one would have made it. <laughs> <laughs> we got a timeout. The regional games and their dandies. The Red Wings and the Blues. The Devils will take on the Flyers. The Avalanche against the Stars all next Saturday at 3 Eastern. So uh, check your local listings for the game you're going to watch. The NHL on ABC. And as uh, we bring down the uh, the final seconds, Dick, one piece of business we didn't tend to today. And I know you joined me in sending along our very best to Denny Crum, who at the age of 64 is stepping down over at uh, Louisville. A Hall of Fame coach, six Final Fours. Two NCAA titles in the 30 years at Louisville. And I'll always remember Denny in the 80s, how he dominated 80 with the doctors of dunk, Darrell Griffin in 86. Never nervous, per the Ellison. And that was the first year that Duke, the Jay Billison Company, was in the house here. They went to the Final Four, but ran into never nervous Mr. Ellison and also Milt Wagner. Milt was there. The, yes, sir, Milt it. for Louisville. The there it is, Wagner. Dick. They tied the school record. Somebody should tell Jason, just push one up to break yeah, the Yeah, make me look good. I said on the top of the show, I'll break the school record today. And they tied it. 
the conference record, Dick, is 43. That was a week for us. So that, I think that's too many threes. That's not the intent of the line. And Morrison kicks into the three. For Carolina, so they're still blazing away. You know, you mentioned Mike Trangisi, and he's going to do a phenomenal job as the selection committee head. We had a session with him arranged by Brian Sheriff at ESPN with all my colleagues. Right. And he said some interesting things. The one thing that really stood out to me, he said, number one, we put more emphasis on a great win than we do on a bad loss. So, for example, Georgia Tech. With those two big wins over Kentucky and over UCLA, yeah, I, that's bigger to them than the loss they had to Clemson. You know, the ACC is concerned about that. They thought they were going to get six in. They are going to get and six. And I think that with Duke's performance here today, I think it helps them. Oh, they're going to get six. I mean, take the to the bank. They're going to get six. I is went the to, Big East still going to get seven? Well, the Big East, no. We don't know about seven wow. out of the Big East. <laughs> Maybe six, but I'll tell you this. You take this, the heavyweight conferences, the top six conferences are going to get at least 30 of the at-large bursts. And I feel Feel so bad for the little guy who has a great great year but unfortunately unless they win their league title you get the automatic berth they're not going to get in jason will bring it up across the timeline under pressure in uh, final 43 seconds if you want to see college hoops folks during the regular season come along tobacco road nine miles apart duke and carolina and right down the way you can find north carolina state I'm Wake Forest down there. It's just an unbelievable environment around here for college hoops. See, I think what people have to understand, what it states in the book, that you're supposed to have the next best 34 teams after the 31 teams to get the automatic birds. And last year, I thought Virginia, North, Notre Dame, and Vanderbilt got a raw deal because I thought they had better resumes than some of the teams that got in. I don't so, think that'll happen this year. Yeah. So, Brendan Haywood, we got a shot of him over there on the bench. His last game here in Chapel Hill. He's had a great career, though. The kid stayed all four years, kept getting better and better. He really, today, they ran into a problem. I thought they allowed Duke to dictate the kind of personnel they were going to utilize. I agree. As opposed to them making Duke dictate what they're going to do. I suppose it changed a little bit when they got behind. And, uh, yeah, exactly. You know, Matt was playing catch up, and there is uh, Brendan Haywood, Rasheed Wallace, and Brad Doherty there. And in fact, that's exactly what happened. I really believe that Matt Doherty, once they got behind, he went to the quicker lineup to try and make up for it. This guy has done a fantastic job and is going to have one great career here. He's a workaholic. He's got great recruiting ability. You know, one little bit of concern here for the. Uh, the trap timeout is called one little concern dick for for the tar heels and their faithful i think this is the third straight sunday that they will have lost it's clemson virginia and duke is that right and the last time i checked wasn't the acc championship on a sunday well you know well, you're saying sunday's a bad day huh <laughs> about never on sunday <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what the deal uh -huh. is here but uh, are you searching now to pull it. this is called this pull is her at its best baby <laughs> pull her at its best i'll tell you one thing though looking across america right now teams that i would be worrying if i were them iowa gotta worry big time the way they're finishing the season alabama alabama doesn't have a lot of great wins especially away from home and they have struggled arkansas getting better and better at the right time really playing well well, now, there'll be some surprises. And I'll tell you, a team of teams better stay away from Gonzaga. Stay away from Dan Dickow and Casey Calvary, because they can flat out play. I'd say stay away from Georgia State. Yeah, you with know, Chenard I... Long in the backcourt. Went to Georgetown, and also... Those kids played Morris. defense yesterday, Dick. I was watching that game, and They're Giselle's good. team comes after you. Morris from Georgia Tech. I mean, the lefty's probably cheering right now. He's a he's a Duke grad. Hey, I wonder if he's donating any money to Duke. We're going to find out. Lefty, are you donating any cash to Duke? <laughs> Charles Grisell, 69 years old and still filled with all That's kinds amazing, of enthusiasm. Tied Eddie Sutton's record, taking his fourth yeah. team to the NCAA tournament. Uh, Coach Sutton had done it, and now this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Great rival. Look at him shaking hands. It's a rivalry where both teams Great have a lot of respect for each other, Dick. This is uh, yes, sir. Super respect. It's not hostility between the players. That's always nice to see. And when it's over, it's over. And uh, it'll be tough again next week if they meet for the... Uh